In scriptures, the human body is often referred to as the temple of God. Yet, it is quite an uncommon privilege for any soul to attain this sacred abode that houses the divine, as it is truly a blessing to be reborn as a human being. On several occasions, Supreme Master Ching Hai has spoken about the rarity of this phenomenon. To be reincarnated in the human world is hard. You have to have enough human quality. You have to have affinity with the parents, yeah, and with the society, with the people around which you were born. And very difficult. To be a human, you need some merit. You have done something good in the past in order to be able, yeah, <laughs> to be able to pick a human birth. As a living temple of God, the human body is fully equipped with miraculous wonders that can be awakened in those who are spiritually conscious and have complete faith in the Creator of all life. In Nidia, Latin for fasting is the human ability to live without food. Since time immemorial, there have always been individuals who can sustain themselves on prana or the vital life force. Through the grace of the providence, Enidiates, people who follow a food-free lifestyle, can draw the energy from nature to nourish themselves. They live on the chi, from the ground, or from the forest, and from the sun and from the air. They make use of all that. Or they live on love, on faith alone. These individuals are known as breatharians, solarians, waterians, or pranarians, and they come from all walks of life, from different cultures and all corners of the world. Indeed, the possibilities and miracles in this life, as our benevolent Creator has designed for us, are endless. We only need to connect within to recognize our abounding largest as God's children. Supreme Master Ching Hai has lovingly recommended a weekly series on Supreme Master Television to introduce those individuals of the past and present who have chosen to live food-free on Earth. May their spiritual stories enthrall you. May hearts be opened and horizons be expanded. We now invite you to join us for part one of our three-part program, Eliton Ben Israel, Challenges in Transitioning to Breatharianism, on Between Master and Disciples. This program discusses the possibility of breatharianism or living without eating food and is not a full instruction. For your safety, please do not attempt to cease eating without proper expert guidance. Eli Tom Ben Israel, a breatharian living in Columbus, Ohio, USA, hasn't consumed food for over 10 years. On today's show, Eli Tom talks in depth about the process he went through to become independent of food. So Eli Tom, you mentioned before when you started off becoming a breatharian with day one, there was a few struggles and how it went on with the physical and the emotional. If you could share with us a little bit what that was like starting out to become a breatharian. Well, the transition to becoming a breatharian is one of the most powerful things I know on manifesting the power of what life force energy could do to the physical body and to your whole physical being. Um, day one of going into this transition uh, was a real trying day for the simple fact the body, is, of course, is going to get weak. Um, you feel aches and pains here, but they don't last long. However, your overwhelming mind about going into this initiation overrides the pain, so you just want to see the full outcome, and you just keep looking down the road. Going into the second day, your emotional body plays a lot with you. 
uh, it comes up and say, well, just go ahead and have something. This pain is getting kind of tough. <laughs> you know, are we making a mistake going the wrong way? But, of course, you still want to see the outcome. Uh, the pains is a lot more critical now in the physical body. But just stick with it and let the transition take place, and the pains will soon work their way out. How did you do that, or how did you deal with that? Well, basically, that's why I tell people going into this transition, at least try to get a schedule where uh, you can start off not doing nothing. You don't have to run here or run there. Uh, of course, when I went into the breatharian transition, I still had to go to work and still take care of daily duties and stuff like that. But the first three days or the first week, if you can get it to where you don't have to do nothing at all, that would be the best way to go into the transition. So when these pains come up in the body, if you just let the pains work their way out because the body is intelligent enough on how to get rid of toxicity. It's not going to get rid of too much where it's going to kill you and it knows how to move it you know traditionally out of the body. It knows what it's doing. So going into the third day of the transition after you make it through the third day the hunger pains will cease. You will feel those hunger pains, the stomach uh, growling and stuff like that but about the third day, uh, the hunger pains will stop altogether. And once you get to that point, you know right there it's not a physical thing. It's mental and emotional you're dealing with now. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Between Master and Disciples, we'll return in just a moment.